Thanks for sticking with us here on Awareness. We are continuing our conversation about the Crown Act and the Sumter Crown Act Coalition. What, uh, what are some examples that you've heard from some of the clients that come through here in regards to their hair and making sure it was a certain way because they had an opportunity uh, that they wanted? Yeah, um, that's, that's happened. So it, it, it's so common until so it's just regular conversation. You know, um, I've had um, a teacher um, definitely had to have, well, felt that she needed to have her hair straight in order to have the interview. Um, I've had people going out for sports, um, high schoolers. I'm having to, yeah, pull their hair back and just to make sure that they're not too ethnic, if you wow. will. Um, and and it sometimes, from what they were saying, the children were saying that it intimidates other schools, you know, other kids on other teams who may not be so ethnic, if you will. Um, I've had, oh, the, the, the locks have been the major issue. I've had people um, wanting to go natural, but just saying, no, that just wouldn't look right on me, or that wouldn't look professional enough. And the, you know, what, what I tell them is like, look, if you could just think of every natural style that you've seen, and tell me which one was unattractive. Listening to these stories from you all, it seems like there is a dual goal here. It's one, reprogramming our community to say, it's okay, this is how your hair grows out of your head. And then also again, stopping the race-based hair discrimination at the same time. Hair is a site of creativity, particularly for black people and young black people. It's one of the few places where you're not policed, right? Where you get to say, I'm going to braid in pink and add beads or I'm going to have cornrows and put lines in my hair and express who I am because why not? The discrimination is coming. My parents went through it. My grandparents went through it. And they, they, they may have suppressed what they wanted to do. So I'm going to have tats. I'm going to have locks. I'm going to live my life because there was, it's what's the point of suppressing, right? So I'm finding less, the conversation in the 2000s was about, you know, how to fit in corporate America. And I do feel like there's still a big conversation yeah. of that with older people. Younger people are over it, but younger people are yeah. more courageous because they are watching, they have TikTok, they have, Instagram where they can share styles and encourage each other. So I think social media has had a big um, position in moving us forward because you go on those hair um, so I, I, I can get lost for like I have to give my phone away because I can get lost for hours watching the braids and the creativity and, and we're starting to see it as a site of not just resistance and activism, but joy. Uh, Dia, you uh, operate your grandmother's salon now. I do. Correct. I do. Michaela, you are your own boss. You also, you know, have your, your, you're writing your books. You don't have to walk into an office just like Dia and answer to anyone. Cheryl, you're now retired, correct? Uh, tell me what you're doing in your time. Are you? Well, I volunteer. You volunteer, so you're not answering to anyone right now. Uh, Terry, you are a master barber. Uh, one of the main barbers at the main attraction barber shop here in Sumter that's been around for a couple of de decades now. Yes, yes. So none of you are in a position where you have to do this, where it's affecting you directly. So my question to you is why are you fighting for other people? You're not walking into a corporate job and having to care about your hair, your locks, your afro, your twists, how you wear your hair either. You don't have to answer to anyone. So why are you taking on this fight for for doing this when it doesn't directly impact you? Well, I would like to say first, it does directly impact me because I have a 17 year old uh, in school. I have family members, friends. I'm sure everybody here knows someone um, that wears uh, uh, a natural hairstyle that could be discriminated against. So. Um, I believe that if we don't do this for any other reason, we need to do it for our children, our future, the ones that are actually wearing these hairstyles and being discriminated against. So someone may say, well, 
um, we haven't had any um, lawsuits or whatever here in um, South Carolina, but the kids could, you know, travel to another state, you know, and have a concern there. So I, I just believe that if we don't do this for any other reason, we need to do this to protect our children. Several big states, you know, have passed uh, the Crown Act, including Texas more recently, yes. uh, which I think we can all agree that's surprising when you think about a place like Texas being able to pass that. And I know that some municipalities and counties individually has passed the Crown Act. Uh, do you really believe, starting with Sumter County, that this would eventually spread as a state law? Yes unequivocally. We want something to be an inspiration for the rest of the state and the rest of the country because this should be federal. It, oh, and and we're getting, I, I feel really optimistic and a couple of months ago maybe not but this is a strong community and I think we're we're at a place I think we're at a place and I have found that a lot of non-black people mm -hmm. are shocked. Yeah. They don't realize that we can be discriminated. When I tell yes, people, I, I, and so I, can I feel like that. we have support yeah. mm -hmm. when they. So it is all about education awareness right. to to our community, but also to our allies. Because it sounds, it's hard to argue that someone should not be allowed in a school or a job because they have cornrows. And so most reasonable non-black people are also like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So we're, we need to educate the entire community because it affects the entire community because you, you might be missing out on our contribution to your Chick-fil-A. Right. <laughs> you know, that could be like the friendliest girl in the world that would affect your bottom line. But somehow her braids, everyone's going to benefit. If we pass the Crown Act, everyone wins. You know, when you feel good about yourself and you're accepted, uh, willingly, not pushed, not by law, uh, not because you have to, but honestly, willingly being accepted, everything is better. Uh, you're motivated, you're, you're willing. So I, I would want folks to get educated. I would want folks to stop and have conversations. When you see someone, when you see a young man with dreads, locks, when you see a young woman with locks or braids, stop and ask the questions that you wouldn't normally ask. And uh, you'll find out somewhere in that conversation you have a lot in common. So that's what I'd like to see. I'd just like to have uh, the importance of family, men, women, young women, young men, being able to represent themselves proudly. Uh, and, and it all starts uh, at home. So. Sumter being home for us, there's no place better to start than right here.